Exactly, it's called poison ivy. <laughs> but it's it's uh, that's our hook, okay, if you will. Uh, I want to celebrate Tasha's work, and uh, because uh, interestingly enough, we've never met, but a uh, uh, fun fact is we've worked on like five or six projects together. Yeah, we just were never in the same booth or right. you're, you're on the same set, but. You, like me, are a Star Trek The Next Generation person. Yes, a lot of people, and TNG, people don't know that. Are you guys TNG any, fans? Any Trekkie fans here? Do you know what I like? Most of the room said yes and responded. You full on shook your head and looked away. I don't know, Yes. I looked over her because she was raising her hand over there. Oh, I was oh, looking at the one person who rose her hand. Oh. Behind you, everybody was raising their Come hand. Come closer, love. Like this, you went. <laughs> come here, come here. Let's engage all together. So this is so small. So yeah, I got to be one of the first adult Vulcans from after the show. Tashonic, a Vulcano regard. Tashonic, a Vulcano regard. Oh, you know what? How about this? I got a visual. I I I brought some of my extra pictures because I didn't bring them yesterday. So it's not. It's going to be show and tell. Nice. Yeah, how about that? Let me see, let's see where um, Tashana is. Do you know how bad I want to pick up the picture and do this? <laughs> <laughs> I know, but you know what's so, up? Like story time. It's like, but, but because all And the then she was a Vulcan. And then she was a Vulcan. Well, because you know what? It's hard to, but look at look. Oh my god. Do I not look like, do I not look like Spock Spawn? You look like a, a Spock. Uh, you look like, like a Spock, period. Thank you. Yeah, no, I mean, that's high praise. Thank you. you, you know, what's, this was not by accident. What's fascinating, <laughs> what's fascinating to coin a very vintage uh, Star Trek, the original series term, what's fascinating, as Spock would say, is that people take for granted, they don't realize, because it's been in our consciousness as a culture so long, that the Vulcan, the Vulcans, how we see and interpret what does a Vulcan look like, all it is is Leonard Nimoy. Like, right. Like that's the touchstone. If you have any resemblance to that handsome man, I do. You got and you got a shot. At the, you got a shot at the gig. Right. You know? I, Can you I, do this? I, All right. You're, you're halfway there. I was the first. Nice. On TNG, so it was not just my looks. It was my brilliant acting. Well, I was saying it was not. Oh, it was my brilliant act. He was trying to say that. It was. <laughs> I, 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 I was kind of hysterical. I wasn't saying brilliant acting either. I was, saying, I, was I was just able to look like Spock, and I did it well. There you go. Well, I mean, not for Well, these are actually my ears. Yes, you just, uh, that's the hair, right? The hair. More jobs. The hair Once they discover these are weird. Okay, shall we move on? Well, I was going to say, you were on TNG. Yeah. I was uh, a redshirt. I died at my post. I was a pilot of the, T of the Star Trek Enterprise D. Wow. And uh, it, uh, it's one of those things, and I do want to talk about it a bit. When it happens to you, and you're there in it, when you're on, you know, the lot, and you're at stage eight, and you're you're going through this experience, what was it like for you? I mean, honestly, we're of the same generation of actor. What was it like to be there working with the cast that you've seen for years on the show at that point? Yeah. What's it like, you know, not not being like, oh, I know who Michael Westmore and those makeup artists are when they're doing your ears. Yeah. What was it like? It was fantastic, because I, I, I grew up watching Star Trek, so, you know, of course, the first one, and I was like, back in the day when there were only three channels, and it was pretty amazing and wondrous, so when I, well, not like that, but I'm, I'm a very emotional actor, you know. The Vulcan, I, that's an emotional Yeah, you had to stifle that. Yes! That's the acting The fact that I there. booked it was just like, yes, you know, and I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm the opposite of this, and I was like, yes. Yeah, I really so to be able to play this very logical character and, and most of my other characters are quite it was wonderful and, and and to have the makeup and to transform it was it was uh, it was exciting. It's a dream, right? Yeah, it's, it, it's one of the bucket lists. You know, you just I've, I've been in Star Wars, Star Trek, uh, some of the bucket lists of like the, the magic. Tasia just eliminated my segue. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, my apologies. It's my large percent. That's where I was going next. Back to you. Is I was going to say <laughs> that. Um, <laughs> Tasia's, Tasia's more of a monologist. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 it's I, awkward for you to have me ask you questions. That's right. I could be. I could be that. Like, of course. <laughs> But by the way, the TED Talk part is very, it's obvious now, I understand. I did a TED Talk, I bet you did. I know, we're going back. So, uh, it was called so, a great, great voice, by the way. Thank you. Most people, most people work in Star Trek or Star Wars because, you know, it, it, it's not two camps. It's just, like we were saying, the dream is to be involved in these franchises that are just part of our consciousness. It's like being in a Disney movie or anything. And Tasia is a Jedi. 
Now that's that's something that I, I, I have to hear how that how that happened how what was the process like because not everyone just falls into working in the Star Wars universe and the Star Trek universe. You know that again I, I was an on camera actress and then I did segue into just doing voiceover. I call myself a recovering actress and a fully functioning voice actor. <laughs> We're damaged goods when we're on camera. It's a, it's, a, it's a brutal business. But the kind and gentle world of voiceover acting, literally it was uh, an audition for, for Jedi Shakti. And um, Lucasfilm seemed to like m my work, Dave. Uh, we're talking about Clone Wars, yes. Clone Wars. I, I'm, I mean, there's, uh, I'm kind of a super geek. Shocking, I know. And, <laughs> and, and, I, and I keep up. And Clone Wars is one of those things that I, I really am protective of it, you know, and the fact that we've gotten to a place where all of these characters now are live action and, yeah. and they're, they're being incorporated into the lore proper, not like uh, the extended universe books and things like that. So when you said Clone Wars at a panel yesterday, I, I had a fanboy moment. Oh, I was, wow. I was like, because I mean, I, I'm not immune to that. I, I, you have the, um, are you a Twi'lek in terms of uh, uh, your race? The yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Would so, you like to see? <laughs> I, would love, I would love to see that, and I'm sure the guests would like to see that. <laughs> I just remember when I have my pictures too. As I'm going, I get to my here we are. There's a Tashona. I mean, uh, a Shakti. Let, let's let's all digest how cool it is to be like, yeah, you see that Jedi? Shakti. That's me. That's me. I'm a Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, that's me. It is. So, uh, listen, you know what? I'll never be as cool as a Jedi. Let's face it. So the women get a chance to. To play that character and to once again channel it, it is a it is such an honor, That's what it is. and it is an honor to be thought of as that you have that in you. Because in order to play these roles, you you have to have a little bit of it in, in you. So whether it's wisdom, I mean, again, we all have something within us that is greater than ourselves. I like I really like to believe that. And sometimes when it's called out of us, through, and that's why we love being actors, yeah. right? Because it's like oh. Somebody saw that in me, and I get to really channel it and now give it back. So, it's are there any? Are there any? God, this is loud. I apologize, you guys. Um, are you guys actors? Are there any actors in the room right now? There's an actor in the front. Anybody else? Yeah. Well, I will. T I will tell you. There, there is something about. Uh, and I don't think it's a generational thing. I think it's just actors in general. We, uh, we are an insecure lot, and yeah. and our when we really <laughs> do we, we we exist well. I like. I, I think the quote. Uh, ironically, is a William Shatner quote from uh, from many decades ago. He said, "I exist well between action and cut," huh. and and I and it, that speaks to me. And it kind of goes with what you're saying is that there's real life, but when we get to interpret and express these characters that are so noble, yeah. interesting, yeah. fascinating, multi-dimensional, yeah, if you can bring, if you can bring that through in a vocal performance, a performance capture performance, an on-camera thing, it's beyond rewarding, but also I think you see it. You know, you watch it and you're like, no, Rosario Dawson, I've seen her in that, in this and that. She's Ahsoka now. Like, like you, you, you have no, there's not one moment where you're like, I don't really see it. And your character, I, I, what excites me about it is that it's, it carries all this wonderful luggage, if you will, that, that yeah. it's, they're noble and, yes. and, and, and well-intentioned and good, decent people. You have to be able to act that on some level. Yes. There's, there's, there's a, there's um, someone uh, at a show recently who was telling me that uh, he was writing uh, a romance novel type of thing and was, and was blocked, was having a problem with it. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I mean, come on. And I was being very casual. And I said, you're a writer, write. Like, we, uh, love is, is a theme that, that, I mean, we, that's our, we start at love, right? Mm -hmm. And he said to me, unironically, I might add, I've never been in love. And I was like, well, we got this is a much longer conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to help, you know. But, but, but you know what I mean? Like, okay, have a good day. You know? <laughs> good luck with that. Right, right. Good luck with that. I have a therapist today right, right here. here. And he actually, exactly. SAG insurance has great therapy. So, so I said, you know, um, uh, you, you, you might want to maybe write about that, explore that. And I, I heard as I heard after that conversation that I was I was approaching him as an actor, okay? That I wasn't really getting that you can write about flying and being a duck, you know what I'm saying? You don't necessarily have to have those experiences, but what I how I'm tying this to our conversation about Jedi's and about sci-fi in particular, thoughtful sci-fi if you will, is that 
you have you if people s see that or you can interpret it, it's because you carry it in you somewhere. Right. You know, you, yeah. you you are you've got that Jedi gene in there somewhere, or the Vulcan logic. Yeah. Or, or, you know, something. Right. Something that it's beautiful to know that we all have yeah. many multi dimensions, and I, I like to offer that up to you. You know that again, we all have insecurity within us, but there is greatness in every single one of you, truly. And, and not, not, not to Truly. in any way be uh, patronizing or condescending. Um, it's one shot, guys. Like, make the most of it. Like, being, being actors, we, we exist in, like I said, between action and cut, but we're kind of celebrating life that, you know, we're not here to, for eternity. It feels like it when you're younger, right. but, you know, we're, we're not. Now so, it goes fast. Yeah. Now it's like, oh my God, I can't believe it. <laughs> so, well, out of out of this, I now i got to get to, to what, what I believe is the meat and potatoes of at least this weekend is. I, I know the Arkham games. I've worked at Warner Brothers many, many times. Yeah. And I know exactly ADR5. I know where you were. Oh, wow. I know, I know, I know all of that. Yeah. That's my, I was just working there recently. Yeah. Um, uh, Saints Row has a new a DLC that I'm involved in, and it was recorded there, where I tried, I, got, I auditioned, I was going to say tried out like a baseball player, where I, where I auditioned for Bane in the New York games. Oh. And it didn't work out. But uh, Roger Craig Smith, who plays Batman, uh, not Kevin's Batman, the, the young Batman in Arkham Origins, I believe. Yeah, Origins. I wasn't in Origins, I was in uh, the other three. The other, the other three. Well, yeah. uh -huh. in, in one of those, uh, the Batman was Roger Craig Smith, and uh, everybody was so excited because he was kind of, not aping uh, uh, Kevin, but every actor, uh, I'm sure you have this too, every actor I said yesterday has a, a Mark Hamill's Joker and a Kevin Conroy Batman. Everybody does. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everybody I does. I do as well. Yeah. Of course, everybody no, does. I don't. <laughs> but, 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 like Richard Eckhart yesterday was talking about being the Joker. Yeah. And they're like, you sound so much like Mark. Well, we all do because we're doing the Joker. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, he's our touchstone, right? Right. But when you are, are working there with Warner Brothers and these established characters, there's, there's got to be this responsibility that's inherent that you maybe don't even share with, with uh, the engineer or the director. You're just like, oh, I am Poison Ivy, I am Poison Ivy. And inside you're like, am I Poison Ivy? Right, of yeah. course, what, of what, course. What was that? Walk, walk us through that process of the Poison Ivy job. What? One. Okay. Again, we're going back a ways. I, I can't remember where I left my keys this morning, but all right, I'm going to do my very best. Um, but I do, uh, I remember when I booked it, I was like, wow, again, you know, sometimes again, it's like, it's like you you fall in. It's like you you suffer, you suffer, you suffer. It's like yes, thank you, thank you, God, because you know the infinite amount of auditions in between each role that you are told no or not even told no. You're just it's just crickets, right? Yeah, it's it's so um, it's so uplifting to know that you get a role. I said yesterday, actors when we book a job, any job. We pretty much surf off of that feeling for, a long time. for like 10 years minimum, yeah. where it's in your consciousness. Yeah. Like, like you get bummed out about, you know, they got your order wrong and you're like, yeah, but I'm poison ivy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you just use that right. in so many ways. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, it, it's never lost on me. Like Star Trek, for example, like, uh, you know, when, when I'm, I'm just complaining about something, it's like, well, first of all, actors want all the jobs and we can't have all the jobs. Right. But, you know, I, I was there was something recently that was Star Trek related. Uh, no, it was Picard because Picard had the ship. The, I died on the bridge of the Enterprise D, right? I was the pilot, and they brought back the set and that actor thing, that that competitive, you know, I want all the jobs kind of thing just manifests itself even at this age. And I'm like, I want to be on Picard. I could be the nephew of the cousin, right. the uncle, of the know. guy from another dimension, whatever. Like oh. I want, I want back in. Right? I'll have to tell a funny story about please, you. Please, please, please. Well, I'll, I'll first now finish the poison ivy. Well, the one job. Okay, well, we can go. You want to go to Picard first? We can go there. We are really, we are really good at this, you guys. I don't know if you can tell. We're tangenty. We, we, we prepared so much. We're tangenty. <laughs> well, I'll just tell you. I, 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 well, poison ivy. The one that I can tell you start chapter. I'm um, sorry, um, but yeah, the when I found out that uh, I got that, and I was actually in the first session, I was like, I really hope I got this down. And of course, you know, I started doing some research and, and trying to find out more about her because you know, again, there's so much lore. And depending, uh, actually, last night I went back, I started researching again because I was like, I haven't connected with her. I'm going to be asked, to right? Yeah. So you know, it's one of those things like you want to reconnect to. But when I was in there and I started um, interpreting her, and again, I really feel like she's such a multi-dimensional. She's not a one note. She's there's so much. She's she was ahead of her time, right? She was an eco 
terrorist, but because she cared so much about the planet yeah. and how relevant. And in the rogues, Batman's rogues gallery is is pretty much rooted in the fact that like the best supervillains, they in their minds they're There's, the good guys. They're the good guys. They're, they're, the good they're, good guys. Guys. they're doing the right thing. And she. Ultimately, I mean, in, which again, what a brilliant surprise for me as the actor in Arkham Knight when she was the Shiro. Nice. She saved the humans by sacrificing herself. I did not know that storyline. That's yes. amazing. Yes, she, she I, again, I, it was written and I read it and I was like, because you know, in, in the first two, she was pretty much just, you know, a villainess and she was out for Batman. But they come together because of Scarecrow's spores that are going to kill all of Gotham. Um, and she saves. Did you? It's like you sound like Arkham Knight. Right. I'm, I'm trying to stifle my ego over here. I'm like, I auditioned for Scarecrow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how, how did that feel about it? Auditioning for Scarecrow. Felt terrible because I didn't get the job. Okay. So, Very good. Uh, Thank you for sharing that. Um, but but anyway, she's she's an incredibly complex character, and I wanted to offer that because she's a seductress, you know, on one hand. And why is she a seductress? Because she her venom lies in her lips. So that's you know again, why do villains do what they do, and how do they justify what they do? And, and truly, she she cares more about the planet than anybody. Uh, and and so giving that weight to her, where it's not just oh, I bet you know, yeah, come yeah. here, bet. It's it was. There's, it's more than just the sexy vixen. What's yeah. what people kind of associate with? I mean, all the all the comic book female characters. Seductress. The, like, the seductress, you know, excuse to put somebody in tights. You know? Exactly. And uh, no, there's way more going on there, especially in the recent games. You know, yeah. they they're writing. They're they're writing. The writers are real writers. They're not just like passing the time till the next fight. Right. Because they're writing fully developed right. and characters. So it was an honor there. to be able to do that, and and and, to, and she had a, an arc in that in that series, and it was wonderful to be able to to get that. And again, very emotional. I mean, she died in Batman's arms. Wow. Um, and you know what's amazing? At the time, there's that actor part of you, and I, I, I know I can speak for you on this point. You're sort of like, it's, it was really beautiful that she died, but she died. Yeah, I know. Well, I, 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 <laughs> all my characters die. I, I, I was sniping the wall when she dies. Uh, right. Metal Gear saw Shaq T. I, I was like, my husband's like, what's going on with you? I was like, I don't know. I'll tell you, I was told because my characters die as well. I, 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 I was, I, I made jokes about it my whole career that of course they die, of course he dies, and it's. I was told, and I'll take it. I was told that those characters, those jobs, they're given to the actor that can carry the responsibility of it, that will actually land it, yeah. that it won't be like, yeah, poison ivy's dead. You know what I mean? Right, right. That they're gonna be like, oh my god, I felt it. I, I got to know that character, and they die. Yeah. And that's it's 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 a compliment. It's a good thing. It's a wonderful thing. I, I, I so glad I did. I took it for granted. <laughs> I took dying for granted as well. But yeah, I, I learned to love it. I know. I didn't even. Know. I just played um, actually Tawny Ames, uh, Governor Tawny Ames in the Bad Batch, which is a really cool show. Are any Bad Batchers bad here? Bad Batch. Yes. Bad Batchers here. So, um, and she died. <laughs> she died. <laughs> I don't know. It's a theme, so. There's. A, I, I have to do a shout out here. It's a small room to, for this first panel of the day. It's Saturday. Everybody, you know, is hungover. I, <laughs> I, I think, or maybe I'm just speaking for myself. But um, there's Kratos, the god of war, in the back there. Please stand up. Wow. Hello. Hello. Uh, well, thank, uh, you for, thank you for showing up. And in full costume. And in full and, and protecting us. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Or thank destroying you. us. Thank you. Um, so you had a Star Trek story too. Uh, oh, only because it was really good that you mentioned um, the Picard. Because I, I actually played um, in Star Trek Generate. Um, no, 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 the uh, oh, Discovery. Discovery. Yes, I came back as the um, computer voice. So when I booked it, again, it was everything's always very NDA, very you know quiet. I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I'm the computer voice. Of Star Trek. Star Trek. Uh, I can't let them know I was a Vulcan because sometimes they don't want you to, you know, they don't want you to. We are taking you right. guys so behind the scenes. Sometimes they, do, they don't want you to do things. Yeah, so I was yes. like, I'm not going to alert anybody when I go on the set to say I've, that. I've, I've gotten not fired, but they've adjusted whatever I'm working on when I've said, you know what's crazy? I was in the second one of this franchise. And they're like, what? Right? I'm they like, oh like, no. Like, they don't like that. You can see it. They don't like it. They right. want to yeah, be fresh, fresh, fresh. Right. So I didn't say anything. So. But so I did my first three shows, and I'm like, 
like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be all of this show. Oh, that's right. Yeah, until the third show when they said, oh, by the way, we have to tell you something. So what, what is it? They said, uh, your ship blows up. I said, what? Even the ship died. <laughs> what? <laughs> Even the ship died. I can't get a break. You know what? You beat me on this one. I said, my, a lot of my characters die. That's pretty good. The ship fucking died. Even the ship uh, I'm like, watch your mouth. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. I, 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 By the way, I have to just share this with you guys. I mean, I've been going out, my, my history with Kineticon goes back to 2009, DJing the raves 10, 12, 15. I, 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 my, a lot of my career was uh, being built and coming to the show to promote stuff. And I'll tell you what was really weird is yesterday, I did three shows. First time we've done this chat format instead of just your good old fashioned panel. And I don't notice when I'm cursing. Just like it just it just, just flows out. It just flows out of me. <laughs> Profanity is I'm very comfortable in that zone. But I was just talking and I, I found out it was it was upsetting people. And I'm like, okay, well I can pull it back. I mean, I, I I'm a professional, but it's funny to me that in this day and age, and somebody would actually be like, "Oh man, my virgin ears!" Like, you know, don't do that. Like, like, don't you live on planet Earth? You know, what I, mean? <laughs> I mean, you're well, the gas station. You're the right, gas station. Right. And someone says, "You know, you left your keys and shit right there." Yeah. Were there kids there? Maybe, maybe that was the problem. Uh, I, I didn't see any kids. Oh, <laughs> I didn't see any kids. Did you see kids? No, I didn't, I didn't see. I didn't see any kids. It would be. It wasn't any. It would be nuts. You <laughs> Now that, I would be like, are you kidding me right now? Like, you know, you love, you know, Bugs Bunny. Isn't that great shit? <laughs> <laughs> that would be it for this morning. Yeah. So, I, I, I'd love, you know that I'm going to tell this story for the, the rest of my yeah, life. Yeah, but let me, let me finish it. So, so, I, so, I, yeah, so, so I said to him, I said, to him, so I said well, what do you mean, Mike? Because well, you're the Shenzhou ship. I said, well, can't you use the same computer voice on Discovery, right? I said, why did they? They said, no, we have somebody else. I said, well, I said, can we flip it? Can I be the voice? Can you just change? The <laughs> did she start already? Can I go to? The and it was actually a friend of mine. So I'm, into the job. I'm, I'm like, no, I, I, I. I, I think what we're sharing is that actors are very desperate. Right? <laughs> We, we will try to negotiate our way right. to work. But it was so depressing that I was like, ship less up. But then Picard, I found out from a tweet that they were they were auditioning for for the, the computer for Picard. And I, I knew this guy from the park. Our dogs play together. And I was like, hey. I, and he actually runs the show. Uh, at Picard. I was like, and you just happened to be walking. I was going to go. Is that Terry Mattel's here? No, it, it, it's, it was um, it's the line producer. Oh, I know, yeah, I forgot what his name is because I'm not going to give him any credit because he didn't get the best. I didn't get the job. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, he's a very nice guy. So I was going to do it. I said, "Hey, listen, I hear a tweet that gee, Terry was going to, but it, it already didn't happen." But I just that, that's the funny thing is that I'm trying to get that on the computer on the card because it's just a crazy, wonderful world. But you never sometimes you know we go through the normal channels and then sometimes serendipity happens. And we get jobs the, the, the old fashioned way. But anyway, I just thought it was very funny that I got to reprime, be on Star Trek again, play the computer, and then die as the computer. I, I, I'm going to tell that story for the rest of my life. Please do. I'm going to say, <laughs> us, whenever, I, I promise you, if today or tomorrow anybody talks about dying on, in, on stage, in any way, on a show, in a, in a, as a character, I'm going to tell the story. I'm and Tasia, 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 what is it as you like? Tasia's got us all beat. She dies in everything, even when she's a machine. They kill her. I, was, I don't know if anyone's ever seen um, Sometimes They Come Back, Stephen King. I died in that. <laughs> anyone seen The Hillside Strangler? I died in that. Well, I mean that. The, 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 the clues are the title, right? Yeah, yeah. I guess you got me on that. You know the movie Everybody Dies? I died. <laughs> <laughs> I died in uh, Elmore Leonard's Glitz. I was, anyway, I, I seem to have a little track record, but I'm alive here today. And I'm really thrilled to be here. I am alive. And, and, and all, all uh, oh, I just, I'm about to censor myself. Shall we take some questions? Yeah, here we go. I guess we're going to, but I'm just going to go. All bullshit aside. aside. <laughs> I would all BS aside. Are we okay with that? <laughs> Are we okay with BS? We're okay with um, that. Um, all so right. my favorite part of, of any panel, uh, like I was saying, panels can be really droning, boring experiences, because just from the structure, it's a little weird. But I love, I try to get, I make every panel that's just me, when it's just me by myself, I'm like a Q and A with Carlos Sparrow. Like I don't want to like do. You just talk to yourself and ask yourself questions. What do you? Yes. 
Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what I do is I open up questions immediately and I fill the hour with questions. So right now, start putting some thought into some questions because I, 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 I'm not going to gloss over that you're also Poison Ivy as a Lego. I am. And that's, and it just, and I'm, that's effing cool. It is, it is. Would you like to see? <laughs> in, fact, in fact, I was hoping. I was hoping. Is this the most fun show and tell you've ever done? It really is pretty awesome that you brought visual aids. I, I wasn't planning on it, but it really works out. Yeah. We have right here. How cool is it? I mean, I want to be a Lego. That's awesome. I love it. Did we not another childhood gift? I, 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 I'm curious. Hello. Before I open up to questions, I have, a, I have a question for you guys. Who knows... Uh, Shows like All Real Monsters, Wild Thornberries. <laughs> okay, do you, and do you guys know uh, Duckman? Those shows. Mm -hmm. We were both on those shows, oh, wow. really? and we both have had the experience of just assuming. I, I'm speaking for you that they don't know what we're talking about. Exactly, because they're, they're, they're this old school, yeah, they're old right? School. This they're isn't old school. animation. Duckman is deep cut at this point, but yeah, I, I love know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I, I, in fact, I don't even sell a picture from that show because people are like, what's that? Right. And I'm like, all right, I try to sell it. And they're like, oh, no, no, I don't want it. I just wanted to know what it is. Yeah. yeah. So, Duckman, and I actually played the only, in the only live episode where Duckman, I actually got to be on camera for Duckman. Get out. Seriously. Please, you got to tell me that story. So, would you like to hear that story? Yeah. Yes. So Duckman, which was very, very sharp edged of uh, Jason. There was a time where animation was just traditional, like Warner Brothers. When you think of cartoons, that's every cartoon uh, on some level, or Disney. It was, yeah. it was. It's not even Pixar yet. And this edgy, crazy Rugrats. Things look kind of odd, but funny or interesting. Um, it, I, I could be argued that those shows that you worked on, that they, they, you would not have the success of Simpsons, Family Guy, Cleveland Show. They didn't start with that because it started with you know, someone screams and their head kind of almost vibrates, you know, and completely detached from reality in terms of biology and stuff, and it's fun and funny. So the fact that you were live action, that's, I don't even know what you're talking about. So, so Jason Alexander, who played Duckman, he has at one point, it was actually like the OJ, it was an homage to OJ. He has a... a Good times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he imagines himself as 007. So Charles Shaughnessy from the nanny, he, he plays himself, has, has a fantasy, and he plays 007, and I am the femme fatale who comes in and, and comes in of, uh, you know, presents with like a dead man with, 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 with stab wounds, and I say, oh, I'm, he, he, I'm saying, I'm here, I need your help for a case. And he says, well, I'd rather have something a little bit more exciting than this one, because it's kind of old. <laughs> And um, I said, uh, I basically he helps solve the mystery of of somebody. So, so to be clear, we're talking about a cartoon that just had a live action episode. Exactly. It, it was a live action scene where he plays 007 and I play the femme fatale, and then he goes. But then they keep coming back to him as the duck, thinking about this fantasy that he has. But it was a live action fantasy. That is the coolest thing. It so, was. Now, how much time do we have, by the way? Thirty. Cool. Perfect. God, Plenty of time. God, we're good at this. Yeah. Um, Are you guys having any fun yet? Are we having any fun? Twentieth <laughs> anniversary of Kineticon. Pretty cool, right? I'm very happy you guys made it out. Any questions here? Right here. I was coming right at you from here. Uh, excellent. <laughs> um, so my question is this, and uh, just need a quick thing to make it, make it make sense. Um, when I'm watching wrestling, like when when characters turn e either you know villain or he good guy, you know one way or the other, yeah. especially when they have it's a villain who's turning into a good guy, they they can't turn into a good guy that has nothing of the previous character, you know, because obviously all the things that everyone connected to that made them start cheering for this bad guy to become yeah. a good guy, all of a sudden now he's just a generic hero guy, right. you know. I'll get to the villain to to so, be so when you all are playing, when y'all are playing a villain who turns into a hero in, in one of your stories, you know, a movie or whatever, um, is there a thought process of how do I still make this character feel genuine, feel like they were before, but this is that character becoming a hero rather than just yeah. their generic hero now? Okay. Well, you know, I guess I don't call us because we do this, but you know, ultimately, every character, villain, hero, has a purpose. And when that purpose is redefined, then authentically you can come from it. 
if you believe the character like Poison Ivy, she still hated the humans. But her love of this tree that was going to be destroyed and her willingness to sacrifice herself more for to save the, the, the planet, not the humans, was how she justified helping the humans, in my mind. So that if I can glean that as the actor, then you can see that there is a dimension. Most villains don't think of themselves as villains because they have to believe in their purpose. Otherwise, it becomes that blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. and we, we're also, to add to that, we are, are your generation, that if we're talking, if we're going back to Duckman and, and uh, All Real Monsters and Wild Thornberries, Back then, I mean, we were still actors, either classically trained or, or you know, uh, on, on camera people. And we had, I will whittle it down in my estimation, it's we have to justify everything we do. You do. We have to justify it. And you cannot do it if you don't have that feeling, that, 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 that in the heart of it. I mean, believe it or not, you are answering your own question, kind of, because that's, oh. that is how, that's how the, the purpose is. You have to have a purpose. purpose. And you have to believe that they And then it all that. works out. It all falls into place. Like you, it's why you sympathize with a character. Like we're doing an acting class right now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you feel it? Yes, yeah. We both. I'm sure you teach. I'm sure. I you do. Teach. I'm teach. sure you teach. So do I. So the second that we start talking about creating a character, it's like that's key. That's how you, you start there. Is, is find purpose. your purpose. That's find right. what makes yeah. this character, and then if you believe that they believe it, you can see the the shift, yeah. and you hope that it's not like again a complete 180. But that there's a subtlety, and when you, and that's why it could be even Sniper Wolf. I don't know, any bit of your solid fans here? All right. So, I mean, she was a villain. She yeah. was a sniper, a cold blooded. But when you find out her reasons, her death scene is like a pivotal scene. I cried when I watched it because I saw it 10 years later because I didn't play the game. <laughs> I was like, I saw it on YouTube. I was like, oh my God, it's so sad. It was sad because I. I had forgotten, you know, the lines. But you, you see, but she grew up as a baby in a war-torn current village. I mean, her life was just about destruction, and this was her way out. This was her redemption. So I think that's what it is for all of us that if we can understand why we do things, then we can. That's why we love villains as much as we love yeah. heroes. Sometimes more because Sometimes more. we're all flawed, right? Yeah. And, and, and when, we're, when we know we're flawed, then we can relate to those that are flawed. Hopefully, again, you know, becoming more aligned with heroes, more than villains, because we need, we need the planet to be So if you want to sign up for our acting workshops in Brooklyn, we'll be doing those <laughs> next year, so. <laughs> yeah, another, another question. I had a question, but then I thought of something while you were talking about Star Trek before, and I thought it was interesting that we got time. You, you mentioned the thing about how they don't want you, you don't want to let them know that you've been on it before, yes. because Star Trek specifically, it's like a mini game where you can pick out people who have played 10, 12 different characters in Star Trek, which is that kind of changed. interesting. That has changed. They yeah, they're okay with it? They, they, no, they, no, it's changed. It's, I'm, I'm agreeing with you and kind of disagreeing with you at the same time. Is that it was always like that because I play that game. Like if you if you're in their stable of talent, if you will, you will play, play a lot multiple roles, play multiple but not in one. Right now, now it's not like that because they're very aware. Internet is straight across the board. There. That's part of the internet too, right? Because everyone checks everything now. They, they, yeah, exactly. They know. They're, they're like someone. It's going to become a joke, kind of that the Vulcan in that show was the, the, the computer. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, the question I had was. Uh, what are your thoughts, uh, I mean, I feel like I think I know where it would go, but what are your thoughts on people who play the characters in non-live action roles getting the shot to play it in live action? Like Kevin Conroy is a great example, yeah, finally yeah. getting a shot to play Bruce Wayne in the... Crisis uh, of the Earth. Yeah, yeah, which was amazing. And I don't feel like that opportunity is given often enough. No, it's no. not. No. I think it's wonderful if you originate a character as an animated character that you get a shot. Um, but again, you know, it's all about sales, right? And it's the exception. It's the exception because voiceover, I, I like to think, that, and again, maybe I'm just hypnotizing myself into feeling good about losing a job to somebody else. You know what I mean? Like, like I'm like, yeah, no, I, I set the tone. It's like, yeah, well, I want to keep setting that tone. You know what I mean? But the reality is that where you were saying, and I think you were going down that road, if I can lose positive, is that at the end of the day, Ashley Eckstein 
she gets all of the respect for being Ahsoka animated, yeah. but if you can get Rosario Dawson to play anything. Right, you're gonna get more tickets sales. Yes. More tickets sales, that's, and that's, that's the business That's part. the business, right? Yeah. You have to get the, it's very expensive to make a movie, and they want to make sure that they're getting, you know, talent that is gonna draw them into the Exactly, movie. and that being said though, you, you, you were very insightful in, in, in the respect that you mentioned Kevin Conroy having his moment as Bruce Wayne in Crisis on Inners on television, in live action, is that, there's fans creating stuff now. I mean, Terry Metalis, I'll, I'll give, you a, a cool, give you guys a cool Easter egg about him. If you watch a documentary that's uh, by Roger Nygaard called Trekkies, that came out at like the end of the 90s, it was like 99, 2000, and it was at that point the only documentary about Star Trek fans, like really from the inside with all the players involved. Um, Majel Barrow was still around. A lot of people that were there on the original series were still around. Nimoy, everybody's talking about what it's like for the Trekkies, for the fans. There's a scene where they're at Paramount talking about the weird fan mail that the show gets, that they get weird fan mail because they are the only studio, Paramount's the only studio ever to always have an open submission policy. So can you imagine what they get? Like they get like guys from prison that are like, I want to be on the bridge, you know what I mean? So, so and, but they welcome all of that stuff and they, they say, we're gonna read it. So they get crazy, crazy mail. Well, there's a, there's a story told by this young intern he is an intern, he's working for free at Paramount, and he just tells this hilarious story about a guy that sends letters to Star Trek, and he's talking about, get, he's in character of, as, the, he leaves voice messages, as leaves voicemails as like W.C. Fields. For some reason, he calls up and goes, we're gonna get the gold, we're gonna get the Enterprise and get the gold, and he's doing this kind of thing, and the guy who's doing that story, so check it out, Trekkies, check it out, we're both Star Trek people, check it out, it's Terry Metalis. Wow. He was an intern. And there and, he is. And now, now he's, he's now the, the showrunner show of Picard. Yeah. So, you know, dreams do come true, guys. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, that's another a question. Another question. Another question. Anybody? Right here. So, how do we just act? You're not going to be convention questions as well. It can be any. Okay, cool. Um, and feel free to think about this for a couple of moments, but. What would you say was the most interesting convention interaction you had? Whether it was heartwarming or funny, kind of weird. Again, feel free to take some time to think about oh. this. Well, you know, I haven't done a lot of them. Uh, so this is always fun. Uh, I'm just starting to get into more doing them, but I, I had a nice <laughs> experience yesterday where there was a really sweet, very shy, uh, young lady and her brother was talking quite a bit and I could see she wanted to speak but she was feeling a little awkward and I was just I saw her and I said you know you are an incredibly beautiful young lady Aww. and I said I hope you can own that and I just saw like this transformation in her face and maybe the no stranger had ever said that to her, and of course I'm a little bit strange for being a stranger that way, but... <laughs> Strangers serve us all very well. It's, yeah. It's, yeah, and I, I think she really took it, and I hope that it's something that she will take with her uh, and, and let her feel that and really own that, because I, I think so many, I, I look around cons and what I really love the most, and we were discussing this yesterday, is that we all get to be our strange and wonderful, glorious selves with no judgment. Yeah, I, I call cons, I, I'm saying this, uh, my experience, I, I go uh, back to the creation cons, uh, the Grand Slam in Pasadena, uh -huh. um, the, the, the Hilton, the Star Trek experience, uh -huh. um, and in that era, I was like, this has a very, and you guys are all at a con, and you guys know what I'm gonna talk about. It feels like a massive family reunion, is that you're related to all these people in this really wonderful way, and just like in family reunions, there's distant cousins that, you know, I, the metaphor that I'm using is, the distant cousins are into Harry Potter, you're not really into Harry Potter, but then you're around the Star Trek people, that you're really into Star Trek, they're your like cousins, like you guys. Can first, first, second, first, second, first, second cousin, right? First, first, right? First, first, and, 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 and when you when you talk to like people that are in the industry, or people that are cosplayers, that they, they kind of, part of their life and their creative life is these things that you're passionate about, 
you know, you guys are at the party. You're yeah. at the best party, and there's no judgments. That's a big one. It's, it's, I would say what has made me love the convention circuit, if you will, is the community. Is yeah. I, 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 I didn't want to just host panels. I wanted to do this. I yeah. wanted to talk about acting. I wanted to talk about the experience of celebrating what you're passionate about. And uh, you know, I mean, just the way, when you mentioned Bad Batch and the arms go up, I mean, when where does that happen? Yeah. Where does that happen? Where you go, oh yeah, I'm in. Me too. You know, mm -hmm. you sit at home in the dark and you know maybe watch it on your phone before you go to sleep. Yeah, me too. We right. have that in common. You're, there's this beautiful level playing field that I think is quite lovely at, at conventions. I do um, too. I, I I was going to ask you um, yeah. in uh, in the Star Wars universe. Um, do you have, because this, this is very old current stuff that we're talking about, uh -huh. do you have people reaching out to you that, that, that are not obsessive fans, but that really know the lore so much that they are only want to talk Star Wars to you online? Or yeah, I mean, yeah, there's people on every level that, you know, they know so much more than we do. Because a lot of times, you know, they, they, they live it, um, I mean, and it, they breathe it, and it, it's just mind-boggling what, what they know, and, and they want to share. And I'm, I'm always like, wow, thank you for sharing that <laughs> little tidbit. I mean, even, even just last week, we had a, an MGS con, and uh, it was like all Metal Gear stuff, and it was just so fascinating what the fans knew and shared about their experiences. Who was, who was your solid snake? Who was, who, who was uh, uh, which actor? Was David it? Hayter. David Hayter. Like I know David, he's great. He's great. He's, he's a great writer, too. He's a great writer. Great writer. He's first a great writer. Just for the uninitiated, just it's a weird fun fact, but it's awesome, is that uh, Solid Snake wrote the first X-Men movie. Yes, and helped co-write the second one. Yeah, yeah, so, I mean, you know, multi-dimensional people, but, but yeah, I love, I love, I love fans because of how they, Inverse themselves, and I just think again, that, and not only that, but again, uh, the permission to be creative on every level. Like I walk around, and I'm just in awe of what people do in terms of their garb and their costuming and why they do it. And I think, I think as humans, again, from from time immemorial, we love to celebrate our beliefs and our passions and use it in an uh, expressive outward mode. I think cons are the modern day privilege of spoken, that. Spoken, spoken like a true artist. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you high praise. Mm -hmm. I, I, I interview people, uh, I've been interviewing people this weekend and you can kind of tell the people that are like, uh, just they love what they do and again, like I mean, like really love the opportunity. Not, not oh, I love what I do, I'm an actor, no, no. I love that I got to play Dom Santiago. I, you love that you got to be Poison Ivy once mm -hmm. in your life or twice, you know? You, and um, well, I said be four, but I was just gonna say it was four. You know? just get it get it straight, buddy. Yeah, okay. yeah. Oh, <laughs> what, what do you think you're putting on here? <laughs> so, so five, but I don't want to play. Five. I don't count the Lego so much. No, there's not DC villains, but no, that's okay. <laughs> I asked them ChatGPT yesterday and I was doing some research and I actually and I was like, who is best known for playing Poison Ivy? And I was like, Teach Blows. So I was like, really? That's so cool. Uh, Thank you, uh, Chat. Uh, Chat, uh, I mean, Chat GPT says it is so. Yeah, then, then it's gospel. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> we, we know that. We're all going to be replaced immediately. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. I'm not playing it. No, I'm not playing Poison Ivy right now. Don't so. forget the Injustice franchise as well. Thank you. Thank you. Number six. Um, do, we have, uh, <laughs> yeah, do we have seven? Do we have seven? <laughs> I just worked so much. I forget. Oh, it's funny. I forget. He was telling a story yesterday about that. No, I remember every job I got because uh, each yeah, one is precious. No, I, but that's what I'm, I mean, you got me back on track. I, uh, I, the opposite of all this celebration that we're doing, about it, it's just so beautiful. Is it gets really awkward for me, like when I'm like. Oh my God! It's so great. I'm I'm a fan. I think it's it's so awesome. You lucky person. This is awesome. And they go, Oh yeah, no, that's that's a long time ago. I don't I don't know. I, I, I yeah, I was I was in that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm like, are you kidding me right now? Like like. 
the gig is to celebrate what we're talking about. I mean, that happened to me. I'm, I, I'm, someone was at this panel that will, will remember this, but I, I, I had to call it out. I had to make a joke about it because I was like, oh, you don't remember because you just work so much. <laughs> and I'm an actor, so I mean, I can say that. But I mean, still, I'm not, I wasn't the only person in the room that was like, you know, oh, they're here. And it's like, they don't remember working on that job. You know what I mean? And <laughs> I should be so blessed. Right? I mean, you, you were mentioning cons. Um, have you done many cons? Many Not cons? a lot. No, I, 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 especially if I was starting to do them before the pandemic, and then of course everything fell, and then I, I've been busy with a lot of different projects and raising kids and life, and I was also um, teaching a lot. And then I was like, kind of thinking, wow, I really like to start going now that my kids are kind of older. I like to start traveling and coming to cons. So my hope is to start doing more of them. Uh, around the world and get a chance to meet fans from every. I I, I, I think you I think you fit in beautifully and, oh, I, and I think and I think and I encourage you to yeah let's yeah. 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 I, I, I I celebrate actors I love actors I have all their albums I I, I, I think it's, I think it's really cool to hear somebody that you know uh, gives an S gives a shit and um, I I I, uh, I do when I see people. Uh, learning what the culture is like in cons that I know so well, and I really do know it really well, is that um, we, uh, uh, back to the insecurity lot, let's go, let's bring the room down, no, I'm kidding. When, when, uh, when we were talking about the type of person that goes to a con, the type of person that wants to be a cons, it's the community, that feeling of community is getting harder to come by. It just really oh, is. Oh, very you much. Know what I'm saying? In, in the, general, world of the world of social media, media it's that all we're divisive, all... It's all divisive, and the fact that, you know, I, I've seen like four of you, like, you guys aren't even aware that you're raising your hands at the same time about the same property that you nod and go like this because Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> I mean, you like the right, the same Solid Snake that I that I liked, and what do we knew? That that feeling is so it eludes us for most of our existence, and so when it happens at cons, I mean, I'm like, yeah, if you if you dig it, yeah. you you have no idea what you're in for. You're gonna have people coming up to you wearing Poison Ivy T-shirts just because it was part of their plan in their life plan for the weekend that they're going to wear their poison ivy stuff because you're there oh, that is mind-blowing that's mind yeah somebody actually yesterday had the poison ivy shirt it was really you know what i mean awesome. well you're you're, you're you're braced for this one if you have sort of a style that you've taken for granted like i always wear hats or i always wear leggings i always wear hats so everyone knows right. like i'm branded well, from my hands well it, you, guys, <laughs> you guys i think you know where i'm going with this people are going to cosplay you that would be cool. Oh, it's totally, it's totally cool. <laughs> I've cosplayed five characters. I've, played, I've cosplayed Poison Ivy and Sniper Wolf. All right. Yeah, I did. I did. I think it's so much fun to. Uh, this is awesome. You're a geek. I, I am. I, in my own way. I, 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 you know. Are we doing on time? I don't want to. Ten. Ten minutes. Do we have any more questions? Any more questions. Okay, right here. Yay. And by the way, I just want to. The only reason I want to share that I did a TED talk was because in the TED Talk, it's called Give Great Voice, and it's how we can all be voiceover actors in our own life to give better communication, to have more confidence when we speak, to understand when we're relating to people and professionally and personally. So I, I, I encourage you to check it out if you want to um, get more confident in your communication, whether it's to be an actor or just give a presentation or to do a, a live stream. We, you know, we really encourage you to like find that voiceover actor in yourself. So it's a kind of fun TED talk, and I just wanted to shout it out because it's really a. I did it for a public service announcement because I was seeing that my. It sounded like you were saying I, I did it for public service. I got a DUI and I died. There. No. <laughs> No, I didn't because I really... And it's part of my arrangement. I have to talk That's about That's right. I have to talk about how to get home. I just feel like a lot of us are not communicating with our voices anymore because we're digitizing our fingers. We're using, you know, we're not, especially, again, as digitizing our, becomes big more and more. So we need to speak. We need each other. We need our human connection. And that's through our voice. I just want to say that um, when you were talking about being a welcoming community, and it's been really helpful for my son, who's here with his friends, which I'm thankful for, but was with a, at a panel with Carlos, I think, yesterday. But anyway, um, you're, both of you are just so welcoming and friendly, but you might like, take the time to talk to people. 
and there just seems like there's a genuine um, respect, okay, I think, okay. with your fans. Okay. <laughs> and um, my son's first con here was probably 2009, and I think the first person he met was Carlos. Oh. And he was doing signings when they were doing signings on the other sure. side of where the meeting rooms were, sure. and he was so nervous, and we went up to the table, and you were wonderful. Look you were you. just, and you took a picture with him, Thanks. and you were just, and every year we see you, and you're always, you recognize us, and it's just, it's a wonderful vibe. Yeah. And also, it's a pleasure meeting you. You are, you're so open and friendly, and Thank you. You're a great person, really. I'm it's really all about you. <laughs> <laughs> and you're very good at it. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. But my, say assholes. my other <laughs> part of the, my other thing was when you found nostalgia and you mentioned the wild thornberries. Yeah. I used to watch that with my son and it just like totally like Roger. took me back to like flashback and <laughs> I mean completely and I love that show. But um how I'm could you be affiliated with that show? I can the Campbell. I don't know. Uh, I don't know so much. Klasky Chupo, the company that was making those shows, they, they, they had this like little Willy Wonka workshop on Highland and Fountain Avenue in Los Angeles. And uh, if you got in, you got to work kind of like on a lot of shows, like you did Duckman and Wild Thornberries. Uh, Our Real Monsters too, right? Yes. Yes, yeah, I mean, I, I, know, I know your resume. Yeah. And, and uh, because it mirrors mine in many places, yeah. you know, like Saints, Saints Row games, if you play Saints Row 2, the third, uh, we were both in, in those games. and. Uh, I, uh, the Wild Thornberries, the reason it meant something to me, I played like, it was like one of those second guy from the left, he went that away. It was, it was, right. it was, it was, I, it was I, we were, like we were starting, we were right. starting. Yeah. It was at the beginning of our careers, in voiceover specifically. And uh, I'm an old school, <laughs> old being the operative word. <laughs> I'm an old school Rocky Horror Picture Show Shadowcaster. Oh. And um, the Shadowcaster? Say what? What's a Shadowcaster? It's um, the movie plays and people stand in front in fully produced uh, sets and costumes, and they act out the movie without looking at the screen. Uh, oh, so wow. you just hear the audio, and, and they lip sync it and act it all out, right? I, I, I yeah, I mean, it's, New York, I don't remember seeing you, yeah, you, you go to the Waverly? Yeah. Yeah, see, I know where she went. Uh, um, yeah, well, that's, that's where it started. The shadow casting started in New York at the Waverly Theater. Wow. And so we idolize the cast of the Rocky Horror yeah. Picture Show. And I, and, 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 and again, I'll make this about me now. No, but, I, no, but uh, Tim Curry was the star <laughs> of the Wild Thornberries. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't know that. Oh. I didn't know that. Oh. And I went to the Christmas party, and Arlene Klasky, one of the owners and producers, goes, um, oh, Carlos was on Duck Man. And, and, have you met Tim? And I was like, no. I'm like, Tim, like, okay, I don't know who Tim is. And just pushes me right up to Tim Curry. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I've said this, I've said this, like for most of my career, no one has ever seen, no one has ever, probably will ever see my best acting. Everything that I'm trained for, everything that I've worked for, my best acting, no one's ever gonna see it because it's not on stage, it's not on the equity stage, it's not on television or in film, it is when I'm around people I admire acting like I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> that is the best acting I've ever done is people that, you know, you, you, you meet someone that you admire, a, a movie star, let's say, and you're like, Oh, hey, Tim is it? <laughs> Tim is it? Oh, right, right. Oh, yeah, Clue, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, inside, it's like, Frankenfurter's right here. <laughs> you know, sweet transvestite is right in front of me. <laughs> so, uh, any more questions? We only have like five minutes. Uh, uh, this, so, uh, I want to say it was amazing that your performance as Poison Ivy is one of the best I've ever seen. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Another cool thing I was having to know that you got to voice Ivy again in The Justice 2. Yes. Thankfully, she doesn't die in that. Thank you. She's Woo. still alive. May, may she come back in The Justice 5. <laughs> <laughs> so then my two-part question is, uh, were you asked to come back to voice or did you have to audition again? And uh, what was the experience like? For Injustice? Yeah. Oh, uh, you know what? I think I basically got the part for Injustice too, which was very lovely. Um, and um, I, it was really fun. You know, it, it, when we do video games, we're mostly alone. You know, when we do series, we get to usually act with a group, but uh, it's you and the director and the writers uh, sometimes. And you, so it's, Injustice 2 was a lot of like 
fabulous uh, poison ivy lines. You know, she's got some of these great lines, and I love saying them just because they're like so snarky and funny and feisty. And she's much feistier than I am, so it was great to play it. And I just remember, uh, you know, again, she has fun with Harley Quinn, so it was really fun. I have a question, very quickly. You mentioned you didn't play a certain game. Do you play any video games? Not as yet. <laughs> well, I, will, I will say, and the gamers in the room, which is probably every single person in this room, um, you should play Injustice 2. If, if you're in an Injustice game, yeah. you need to play that shit right now. Okay. okay. Because it is the coolest thing. Is it? You're involved in something really, really cool, and you're going to see, I mean, you did efforts and exertions, right? Oh um, my god, so many. <laughs> <laughs> I do have it. You have it lived as well. Done. Well done. Let's Thank you. 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 So you are the first recipient of the first year ever of Chat with Carlos Ferro. Oh. So you can remember. This is my cup. My cup run is over, Carlos. And um, I, I would really appreciate something from you guys. Um, we are wrapping up. Thank you for coming to the panel. Would you guys mind taking a picture with Tasia and up here? Would you guys come? Come, come, come. Taking a picture with Tasia. Our lovely intimate group will make me yes. so happy. Kratos, you got to get in there. <laughs> I will not let you leave. Yes. <laughs> and you too, come, come, we want, come all, come all. We are love here. We are beauties. Come, my darlings. I'm so happy to have you. <laughs> come, 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 please. Oh Hello. <laughs> it's so nice to all be together, and I really wanted to thank you all for coming. I didn't know if anyone was actually going to come, so this is so nice. Okay, here we go. Are we all in? We're all in. Ready? One, two, three. Another and then another one for safety. One, two, three. What? <laughs> <laughs> another one for safety. I didn't curse. Turn off your phones. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. What? Thank you guys for coming to Second Day of Chat with Carlos We love you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Really made me happy that you were here. Oh, and come and find me at my table. I'll be yes, signing. Yes, downstairs in the. As you can tell, I have many pictures. <laughs> we're not screwing around with the pictures. Hi. Tasia Valenza, a.k.a. Poison Ivy. And you've just been watching King's Entertainment Reviews. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and watch.